Why is it when you finally muster the motivation to get ahead, the weather never cooperates? In the month of February, I tried to make this video twice. Both times, the weather had other ideas. Well, friends, I think we can safely say that the better part of winter is behind us. And as I pot up the last of the head start seedlings, these scraggly looking bell peppers in this case, my thoughts are moving from the comfy confines of indoors to the unpredictable necessity of my outside garden. While we're still quite a ways from planting any starter plants out in the garden, that doesn't mean that there's no work to be done. Like many of you, my garden goes dormant for up to five months of the year. Save for the ever dependable garlic bulbs, life and growing outside completely stalls for months at a time. And hopefully unlike many of you, my outside garden tends to accumulate stuff. Old pots, spent trays, unused seedlings and starters, you name it. At this point, we're at mission critical. Things have gotten a bit too unruly for my liking, so it's time to claim this section of my garden back for ourselves. And not a moment too soon. We've got tons of plants to plant, like we always do. And oodles of seeds to sow, as soon as that ground is warm enough. With the time of year and the weather becoming more favorable, it's time to get the outside ready. So today, let's do just that. But more importantly, let's also discuss some of the strategies around overwintering, garden cleanup, and prepping that dormant garden for the coming spring. As bad as this looks, honestly, it's not as scary as you think. No doubt, Mother Nature has made a serious pitch to reclaim this area, but with a little knowledge and some cool techniques, even the worst garden patches are easily recoverable. Looking back, the initial building, moving, leveling, and trucking all that soil in was infinitely more work to get this area set up. Yes, filling all those beds with soil was a pain, but that was also a one-time endeavor. Even still, you never want to see any amount of work go to waste. And this space, this space here, is one of the best places to grow on the farm. We call it the Northeast Garden, and it's time to get it back to its former glory. The first part is going to be easy. Let's just collect all the old pots and trays, empty them into the compost, and then set them aside for either cleaning or recycling. Now, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, how does an active functioning garden turn into this kind of a disaster? How is it that we can go from growing an insane amount of veggies in the summer to absolute disarray just a few months later? Well, the answer to that is by design. One, I knew that I was going to be making this exact video upwards of six months ago. So of course I can embellish the amount of clutter and chaos. But even more so, for a dormant garden, this kind of neglect can actually be beneficial. Not so much all the mess and clutter, obviously, but the protection of colonizing plants, weeds as some people call them, and the covering of every square inch of exposed soil. In a no-till setup, soil is your most precious resource. Wind, frost heaving, erosion, and drought are just the absolute worst. They really are. By covering the soil in my winter garden with anything and everything possible, I was able to preserve the life in the top few inches, knowing full well that by next spring, I'd be reaping the rewards of that protection. So the mess, the clutter, and even those weeds don't bother me at all because they're by design. You see, what we're doing here is mimicking nature's methods to a T. 
by basically blanket mulching everything when the garden needs it the most. Now, obviously I know the best method would have been to cover crop these beds in the fall and enjoy a relatively clean, organized, albeit dormant winter garden, but then we wouldn't really have a video, now would we? Moving on, now the real fun begins. It's blackberry bush time. Honestly, for as many strawberries as I grow, it's the blackberries and raspberries that are actually my favorite. Unfortunately, when I grow something, I always go overboard. That's perfectly fine for the raspberries, which are just starting to sprout now, as they grow mostly upright and contained. But those blackberries, they're another story altogether. These guys spread like wildfire, and they're a plant that can quickly take over. When I first put them in this area, I really thought I could control and contain them. Well, even grown in pots, I can see now that that was a pipe dream. So, our next task is to remove all the blackberries from the area. No small feat, so let's speed this one up to save us all some time. Not too bad, I got away with pretty minimal damage. Okay, next up are the pathways. Without proper mobility in and amongst the beds, gardening really becomes a pain. Without easy access and movement around the beds, our cleanup efforts here are gonna be far less effective. So, a quick trim. And a remulching of the pathways should do the trick. Finally, with those pathways all done, we can tackle the beds themselves, of which there are eight. And the breakdown of those is as follows. We got four eight by four beds in the center, two six by two beds right up against the greenhouse, and then two long skinny one by eights along the fence. Perfect drainage, maximum sun exposure, and almost no wind. It really is the best place I have to grow. Up until now, this has been a pretty rudimentary garden maintenance and cleanup video, but here, here is where we save a ton of sweat equity by working not only smarter, but better. The goal has always been to cover and protect our bare soils. Case in point, look at this stuff here. It's only been exposed for about 25 minutes and already it's turned to dust. As I said before, I would have much preferred to have these beds planted with cover crops last fall, but alas, that wasn't the case. However, we did get by just fine this winter by covering up that soil with old pots, trays, spent plants, and of course the colonizers. All those dandelions, buttercups, and other so-called weeds did their job by protecting and preserving those top layers of soil quite marvelously. Now, instead of pulling up all these dandelions and other colonizers, completely destroying that soil microbiology, we're going to mimic Mother Nature and do a cut and smother. The process is real simple. Simply cut down each unwanted plant right down to the root color and then drop the foliage in place. Sort of a chop and drop if you will. It can be tedious, especially for those wider beds, but it's nothing that we can't handle. Now, I know that for most of these vigorous colonizing plants, it's not actually going to kill them, but that's not the point. It doesn't matter. It's all about just setting them back even just a little bit so that our desired crops can eventually take over and smother them out. 
With eight big beds, there is a lot of ground to cover, so let's speed things up so we can quickly move on. Ideally, we'd be planting out all these beds right now to take advantage of the suppression and reclaim the space back for our desired crops. But despite it looking really nice out today, it's still far too cold. Instead, I'm going to completely cover each bed with recycled newspaper to smother out any existing plants that are trying to grow back up or prevent any new ones from getting established. This is super effective in keeping those unwanted plants in check while we wait for the weather to warm so we can plant out our garden. You can also use cardboard for this, and many people do, but I'm probably going to be direct seeding some of my crops here, and those tiny seedlings often have a tough time punching through the thick cardboard. Now, I probably could remove the thick, soggy cardboard after, but again, that's just more work. Remember, it's all about minimizing the effect while maximizing the result. There we go, all covered up. What a change. How satisfying is this? I tell you, it's going to be exciting to get back outside, plant, and make videos in this space all spring and summer long. I just can't wait. But before we can get there, let's recap some of the main points we talked about today to see what we've learned. No question, gardening can be hard work sometimes. But... Once we're all set up, a lot of that initial work does not have to be repeated. Further to that, to minimize future work and grow better crops in the process, we need to be protecting our soils through the dormancy of winter. It has to be priority number one. Cover crops are the best if you can plan ahead in the fall, but even colonizing plants such as dandelions and clover can work in a pinch. The goal should always be to cover the soil when it's not in use. So even old pots, trays, spent plants, planks of wood, they can do as well. What may look daunting at first doesn't necessarily represent the actual work that's needed to be done. Cutting down the colonizers and volunteers, followed by smothering with some paper or cardboard, is all that's needed until you're ready for spring planting. A satisfying day of work with tangible results, no question. Glad you guys could join me for it. Hey, hopefully your gardens don't start out as bad as this particular example here, but even if they are, we now have the knowledge and the tools to know that it's really not that hard to get them ready for the season. Hey, happy growing guys, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.